Hi, I'm Rita Zyber. I'm on staff at St. Mary's. Hope you're doing well, and I thought I'd share a quick reflection on the readings for this weekend. In college, I had a Baptist roommate. I went to some prayer groups with her, and I was surprised when people ended their prayers by saying, in Jesus' name, amen. Growing up as a cradle Catholic, we didn't hear that very much. For some reason, those just weren't Catholic words. We tended to opt for the whole Trinity with a sign of the cross added in. But I hear more Catholics saying this now, and I like it. It makes sense that Jesus would ask us to pray in his name, as he does today in our gospel passage from John. He's the person of the Trinity that we can more easily come to know as one of us, as a heart-to-heart -heart friend. Today's gospel gives us that very famous line, ask and you shall receive, so that your joy may be complete. Hopefully, what we will receive most truly in prayer is a closer, more friend-to-friend -friend relationship with God. He doesn't promise us everything we ask for, but he does promise us complete joy. And with that kind of closeness to God, I think we can deal with whatever comes up. Tomorrow, we celebrate the feast of the ascension of the Lord into heaven. The apostles will see him leave the earth to return to the Father. But Jesus promised to send us the advocate and that he himself would always be with us. This makes me think of another way of praying from St. Ignatius of Loyola. He called it the triple colloquy. After spending some time in prayer or meditation, Ignatius says to think about whatever came up and then to imagine talking it over with Mary, with Jesus, and with God the Father. Just run it by the three of them like a conversation and listen carefully with your heart to what they're telling you. It seemed weird at first, but then I loved the idea of them all standing there and listening to whatever I wanted or needed to bring to them. I've heard some people start with Mary, and talk with her and listen, and then imagine walking with her toward Jesus and continuing the conversation. Finally, they bring it all before God and do some more talking and listening. For me, I tend to picture the three of them standing there together. It makes me think of a great force, like spiritual superheroes. No capes, but so much goodness and love. I think it's what makes me like our concept of the communion of saints so much, too. So often, we need to tap into these forces of goodness and holiness in our lives. We really are not alone. And the point is, things can be tough here on this side of heaven. Jesus knows that firsthand. He's already experienced the things that we go through as humans. So we can bring this to him. We can ask for what we need in his name because Jesus is with and in the Father, and we are too. We can ask because he truly wants our joy to be complete. Have a great weekend.